I wanted to ask you all about it because right. this isn't the classified documents case that, that Trump is dealing with. He is now coming out and saying uh, on Truth Social, LA, that Joe Biden's DOJ authorized the FBI to use deadly lethal force against me. Marjorie Taylor Greene is taking it. She's saying that they were planning to assassinate President Trump and gave the green light. I won't even mention that Trump's attorneys are arguing to the Supreme Court right now that technically the president has that authority. But Obviously, that's, that's not true. The FBI had to put out a statement today saying this is standard procedure, that the FBI always has lethal force. They showed up to Mar-a-Lago knowing Donald Trump wasn't there. They didn't show up at 6 o'clock in the morning. They didn't come, you know, with the lights flashing and the guns blazing. It was a very chill scene for, for a scene where they were showing up to, to find classified documents. This is ridiculous. There's nothing to see here. And I looked even at what specifically they're talking about. If you look at the search warrant documentation, there is a standard form. It's page 11 of the sheet. And it gives the FBI and the generally acknowledged standard for use of lethal force. It says, essentially, you can only fire your weapon, you can only use lethal force if there is imminent danger of death or serious bodily injury to somebody else. If you see somebody else about to shoot somebody, about to stab somebody. It is, if anything, a very tight limit on when you can use lethal force. Almost never. It appears in every search warrant, every ops plan, operational plan, ops plan. There is nothing to this. The notion that there's something dangerous, wrong, I, I'm hesitant to even dignify the assassination talk by even mentioning it, but completely out of line. You know we're here about oh, just AG. To, uh, I don't think you know what you're President. here for. Well, you the one talking about. I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, what ain't nothing. Wait, hold on, hold on. Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath would even you order. Order. I would like uh, to move to to take down Miss Green's words. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical fan, appearance Wilson's of another fan. person? Are your move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, really? Don't even play. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? Uh, uh what now? Late night committee meeting in Congress went off the rails this week after Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican of Georgia, insulted the appearance of my next guest, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, Democrat of Texas. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. So you have since uh, called her racist, uh, yeah. Congresswoman Greene. I, I want to understand your perspective of this. Do you think her going after your eyelashes, uh, that that in itself is racist? I think her specifically doing it to me, yes, that was the intent. Um, as has been stated, you know, women wear makeup, we wear lashes, we wear all types of things to beautify ourselves. But MAGA has historically been on social media doing the things where they're saying, oh, she's black with um, lashes and nails and hair, and so she's ghetto. And so to me, this was her buying into that rhetoric and trying to amplify this for the MAGA crowd. And so, yeah, I absolutely think that she only did it to be racist towards me. Because it was towards you or because it was eyelashes? So in that sense, it's kind of like, in your view, buying into a racist trope. It, it is buying into a racist trope, but the reality is that women of all colors wear lashes. Right, no, I know. Yeah. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Is there anything you think should happen here? Do you think the Congresswoman Green should face any sort of punishment? I mean, she didn't face any at the time, so I don't anticipate that she'll face any in general. I mean, I think that this speaker should be inclined to try to rein her in after trying to tr kick him out of his position, but they just let Marjorie do whatever she wants to do, and I think this was the first time that someone actually said no you won't just treat me whatever way you want to and get away with it. So just to explain to our viewers, she said what she said, which was in a personal attack on your appearance. Uh, and then the Republicans refused to take her words away. Yeah. Because uh, they said it wasn't a personal attack. And then you said something about, uh, you didn't mention her name, but you obviously were talking about Congresswoman Green, bleach blonde, bad built, butch body. Very good. So it's <laughs> tough to say. But, but, but... You've really embraced what you said. You're printing it on swag. I think we have an image of the shirt uh, here that you're, you're selling to help raise money to elect Democrats. How would you respond to say it's inappropriate to respond to an attack on somebody's physical appearance? And you hear Congresswoman AOC say 
you know, you, you shouldn't be attacking somebody's physical appearance. But then you did the same thing. You attacked her yeah, physical so, appearance. Yeah, so to be clear, what I asked for was clarification on the ruling. If her words were taken down, that meant that she was going to have to leave the committee for the evening, which actually would have helped everybody out because the source of the chaos is always Marjorie Taylor Greene. But the, the chairman was concerned about his votes. He was concerned about whether or not he would be able to move forward with contempt. And so therefore- it's contempt he, of the, yeah, they were the- Of Mary con, Garland. Con, yeah, for the Attorney General Garland. Absolutely. Yeah. So therefore, I'm like, well, what are we doing? So what are the parameters? And I generally wanted to know. So I did not state anything to her. I specifically asked a question and I didn't even mention her name. Mm -hmm. And so it was for clarification, and that's what I asked for. And In the classified documents case, after new photos showed defendant Walt Nauta moving boxes around Mar-a-Lago, unsealed court documents revealed some of those classified documents were found in Trump's bedroom months after the FBI searched the resort. Um, Molly Ball, these are these are new pictures um, of this alleged Walton Alta, the personal aide to Donald Trump uh, down at Mar-a-Lago, also charged in the case as the judge has basically put this all off until uh, after the election. I mean, what is the significance of this? Also, the, 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 these new notes that these boxes, there were boxes found in Trump's bedroom? Well, I think it's a reminder that the crux of this case is not so much that Trump took the documents, although he wasn't supposed to do that, uh, but that he refused to return them and went to great lengths to try to hide them and to obstruct the investigation, at least allegedly, according to the to the prosecution. And, and that's really what's at the heart of this case. It's not so much the, you know, the potentially inadvertent or potential, you know, misunderstanding of the laws around this stuff. It's that he didn't think the rules applied to him. He didn't think he should have to give it back despite what the law says. And this has, of course, become um, the latest thing on the right. Elliot, because everyone has suddenly seemed to notice, and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar, who are on the very far right of the House Republican Conference, are talking about the fact that this FBI raid, of course, was authorized because Trump wouldn't give this stuff back, right? He was asked repeatedly to give it back before this raid occurs. But in this uh, raid authorization, there's an authorization to use deadly force. And Trump has uh, been also posting about this on his uh, Truth Social page. Can you just kind of clear this up for us? Is that uh, people on the right are saying that this uh, some of them are going so far as to say this was an assassination attempt. Uh, my understanding is that this is pretty standard. Yeah. What's the deal? This is absolute nonsense. It is standard operating procedure uh, to empower law enforcement to use deadly force. As we've seen in spectacular fashion over the last five years in many of these high profile cases, law enforcement is empowered to use deadly force when executing a search warrant. I wouldn't even call it a raid. It's a standard procedure when officers are appearing at a home and particularly FBI officers to, to, to be prepared to use deadly force. You would find that in the case of an eviction. You would find that if, if they're coming to evict someone from their home, they'd be empowered to use deadly force there. Uh, in the like immigration uh, enforcement, uh, that would be the same. Now, that doesn't mean that they can break down a door and just start shooting at people. There would have to be a, a threat. And if someone were at the time they entered Mar-a-Lago to you know to have been wielding machetes or firearms, of course, law enforcement would be empowered to use deadly force. And the idea that this is somehow an assassination attempt is nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. All right, this is why we have you here. Oh. Thank you. All right, now this. They say that the indictment fails to clearly articulate a crime and instead amounts to, these are Trump's lawyers' words, quote, a personal and political attack against President Trump with a litany of uncharged grievances, both for public and media consumption, close quote. Chris, that is like a, an angry tweet masquerading as a legal filing. I understand and appreciate why the prosecutors who are seeking a fair and timely trial not only for the defendant, but for the American people who need this case resolved. I can see why they're frustrated. So, Ken, I also want to ask you about something that uh, Donald Trump posted the other day. Now, we know that for a long time he has criticized the raid on Mar-a-Lago, but he says that the FBI was authorized to use deadly force during the raid at Mar-a-Lago, kind of implicating maybe that there was uh, insinuating something nefarious was going on there. Was it? 
Chris, he didn't insinuate it. He alleged it, and so did many of his supporters. And this is a really disgusting case of disinformation, Chris. What they are talking about is a standard form that was included in the warrant package, which was a DOJ statement of policy that federal agents are authorized to use deadly force when their lives are threatened. By the way, so are you and I, Chris and, and, and Glenn. Uh, that's just standard self-defense law. But there was a document that explained when they could and couldn't use deadly force in the context of a warrant search. And FBI agents say that that is generally included in the supporting documents to a warrant. Donald Trump's lawyers included that in the filing. Uh, some conspiracy theorists started tweeting about it, saying that it was an alleged assassination plot, that essentially Joe Biden had ordered federal agents to authorize them to use deadly force against Donald Trump, who, by the way, wasn't even there when they served the warrant. And then Mr. Trump put it on Truth Social. And there are going to be millions of people who believe that it's just not true. The FBI issued a statement underlining that this is standard operating procedure. There was no specific authorization for any kind of force during the Mar-a-Lago search, Chris. Glenn, we're completely out of time, but I have to ask you your reaction to that. I join Ken's description. This is disgusting disinformation. It is. It's, it's planned to deceive people. And unfortunately, there are some folks who are going to be gullible enough to fall for it. Every law enforcement operation, every law enforcement officer can exercise deadly force if it is necessary to repel a potentially lethal attack. This is more of the same that we've come to expect from Trump and his loyalists. So, folks, you know, in nature, they have these terms like uh, symbiotic relationships and parasitic relationships. And a symbiotic one is where, like, you know, a bird sits on top of a hippo and it eats the bugs and the hippo gets a benefit and the bird gets protection because they're on the hippo. Uh, and, and in politics, you often see that, right? But Marge and Trump are a rare form of relationship where they parasite off each other, making each other look more stupid, more criminal and more unhinged. And you saw that here where Marge continues to sound like Donald Trump in her weaponization of appearance and things like that by by attacking a fellow female congresswoman. Uh, for, for not being pretty enough or for trying to fake how pretty she is. She sounded like Donald Trump in all of his attacks on women before, during, and after his time in office, right? Uh, and Donald Trump and Marjorie are together are pushing forward this unhinged conspiracy theory that somehow Joe Biden was secretly planning to have uh, the FBI or whatever take Donald Trump out when they did the, the search of Mar-a-Lago, which experts are noting prosecutors uh, with decades of experience collectively, uh, generations collectively, are saying it's an absurd claim by Marge and Trump. And so they're trying to backtrack a little bit trying to delete these internet videos, trying to hide their shame. But the reality is we got Trump and Marge in 4K and much like them trying to backtrack, uh, you know, Crockett slammed both of them. We're going to slam both of them too.